right next key provision is capacity building and knowledge sharing so the un ccd supports the capacity building efforts and facilitates the uh, exchange of knowledge technologies and best practices among countries and stakeholders to enhance their ability to combat desertification and manage land sustainably <music>
so this is the major objective of this summit right so now let's understand the key outcomes of this summit right so one of the major outcomes of this summit is agenda 21 so this summit produced agenda 21 so what it is it is a comprehensive blue blueprint for sustainable sustainable development so agenda 21 is a comprehensive blueprint of actions and measures so that we can achieve sustainable development so that outlines strategies and actions so this agenda 21 contains strategies and actions for addressing environmental social and economic uh, challenges at the global level at the national level and at the local levels so this is one of the important outcomes of this uh, summit next one is uh, a rio declaration has been adopted so it adopted a rio declaration on environment and development which outlines the uh, declaration out outlines principles for sustainable development including the principle of common but differentiated responsibilities so what this principle means common but differentiated responsibilities so historically uh, 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 the global warming and the loss of biodiversity the impacts are uh, i mean experienced at the local level though the developed countries they are uh, more responsible for release, uh, releasing of greenhouse gases and the subsequent climate change global warming and climate change so the impacts are felt by all the countries in the world so so they it is the responsibility of all the countries uh, to fight the global warming and the climate change but the uh, developed countries they have the larger responsibility the developed countries have the larger responsibility because historically they have contributed a lot to the global warming so this principle uh, this particular principle common but differentiated responsibilities outlines this principle so it has also been adapted in this rio declaration right <coughs> next one is convention on biological diversity so within the summit a convention on biological diversity has been adopted so the the convention has opened for, uh, opened for signature at the rio summit the aim of this convention is to conserve biodiversity ensure sustainable use of its components biodiversity components and uh, promote fair and equitable sharing of benefits ar arising from genetic resources so previously also when we were studying the uh, 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 national biodiversity authority nba when it comes to india when we were studying the organizations we have studied about nba national biodiversity authority so uh, the responsibility of this organization is to uh, whatever whenever the genetic resources or biodiversity resources are utilized the benefits arising of, uh, from that utilization shall be shared equitably so example uh, example also i have given so the traditionally the indigenous people possess some medicinal techniques they also have the knowledge of some medicinal herbs so whenever a private company or a big player utilizing that uh, that knowledge that company has to share uh, proportional uh, profits with the indigenous people so uh, this convention also ensure that the benefits arising out of the uh, utilization of biodiversity or genetic resources they have to be shared equitably right next another important outcome from this summit is united nations framework convention convention on climate change unfccc so try to remember this one also it is also one of the important outcomes of this summit so it also opened for signature unfccc at the rio summit marking the beginning of international efforts to address climate change and its impacts right right next another important outcome is forest principles so the conference endorsed the statement of forest principles which provides a framework for sustainable management and conservation of forests worldwide so another important outcome is also there united nations convention on unccd united nations uh, convention on combating desertification desertification 
so basically this convention is about fighting and mitigating the uh, loss of uh, we can say declining of land resource and the desertification so to combat the uh, it uh, the desertification this particular convention has also been adapted in this summit right so these are the some of the in, uh, important outcomes about the uh, from the rio summit or earth summit 1992 now we will see the uh, united nations framework convention on climate change so just we have studied it is one of the important outcomes from the rio summit right so uh, unfccc it is an in international environment treaty adopted in 1992 during the earth summit or rio summit so the it is the foundational framework for global efforts to address climate change at its impact so ever since it has been uh, adopted it is working as a foundational framework for further from uh, from 1992 onwards it worked as a foundational framework for further measures about combating the climate change and global warming right so if we see the objectives of this unfccc the primary objective of unfccc is to stabilize greenhouse gas concentrations so whatever the i mean basically the global temperatures are increasing because of the uh, continuous rise of greenhouse gases so one of the major objectives of this convention is to stabilize the release of greenhouse gases into the environment first objective is to stabilize and further in further actions it is trying to reduce the concentration of greenhouse gases greenhouse gases in the environment right so first uh, its uh, primary objective is to stabilize the uh, concentration of uh, greenhouse gases uh, uh, in the earth uh, earth's atmosphere right at the level that prevents dangerous anthropogenic interference with the climatic system right so to achieve this the convention aims to promote international co cooperation and action to mitigate climate change adapt to its impacts and uh, facilitate technology transfer and financial assistance to developing countries so as we all know uh, the developing uh, developing countries do not have wherewithal to fight the climate change or the ill effects of the climate change and uh, for that matter global warming so they need the assistance of the developed countries both technological and financial so this framework also aims to provide that support both technological and financial to the developing countries for fighting and adapting to the impacts of the global warming all right if you see the key key provisions uh, of this convention uh, common but differentiated responsibilities just now we have understood this principle what this principle means so it recognizes that all the countries share responsibility of addressing climate change but acknowledges that developed countries should take the lead in mitigating emissions because historically they have contributed more to the uh, release of greenhouse gases so when the industrialization was happening in the europe and uh, uh, northern america so especially uh, in those countries the industrial revolution has occurred and they have reaped the benefits of industrial revolution and in that process they have contributed a lot lot of greenhouse gases have been released and uh, in turn it contributed to global warming right next is national climate action plans so generally we also call them as nationally determined contributions right so parties to the parties to the convention are required to develop and regularly update national climate action plans that is uh, those are also called as ndcs nationally determined contributions towards the fighting and mitigation of the greenhouse gases right so whatever the gas uh, greenhouse gas emissions are there so the country should uh, i mean tell the actions what uh, what are what are the actions they are going to take for fighting the release of the greenhouse gases and they have to be frequently updated right so other provision is annual conferences of the parties so parties to the unfccc meet annually 
at co-op sessions to review uh, to review progress and uh, negotiate agreements and make decisions on issues related to climate change mitigation adaptation finance technology etc so uh, try to be update with the co-op sessions also so conference of party parties it is uh, held every year every year so generally in the month of december so the latest summit is cop 28 it is held in dubai so try to uh, be update with the whatever the uh, declarations that have been passed uh, through this uh, i mean cop summits also so the latest summit is uh, cop 28 it is held in dubai so in this uh, cop summits we are uh, we are going to study the paris summit paris summit right so it is very very important summit because one important agreement has been signed there so uh, in this lecture only we are going to study about the paris conference of parties right so <coughs> right these are some of the important aspects about the unf c c c right next convention uh, it is also one of the important outcomes of the rio summit or the arth summit so convention on biological diversity so it is a treaty established in 1992 through the arth summit so one of the key agreements resulting from the conference arth summit uh, alongside the so unfccc we have seen and also convention to combat desertification so these are the three convention uh, conventions that have emerged from the arth summit so the primary objective of cvd is to conserve biological diversity promote sustainable use of its components biodiversity components and ensure that fair and equitable sharing of benefits arising arising from the utilization of genetic resources if we see the key provisions of this convention conservation it emphasizes the conservation of biological diversity through establishment and management of protected areas so the convention uh, bats for uh, uh, declaring protected areas the conservation of habitats and species and also restoration of degraded ecosystems so the convention advocates for all these measures next one is sustainable use so the treaty promotes sustainable use of biological resources so to meet the current needs and also conserving the resources for the need and benefit of the future generations right future generations so you might be knowing the definition of the sustainable development future generations so you might you must be knowing the uh, definition of the sustainable developments so sustainable development means uh, uh the resources whatever that are existing we have to utilize them for our needs and also we have to conserve the resources for the use and benefit of the future generations so that is the definition of the sustainable development so the uh, uh the treaty one of the important uh, provisions of this cbd is also this principle next is access and benefit sharing we have already seen about this so the cbd includes provisions for the fair and equitable uh, sharing of benefits derived from utilization of genetic resources and also the biodiversity biodiversity obtained from indigenous and local communities so the treaty uh, should ensure make sure that whenever the knowledge has been acquired from the indigenous or traditional people they have to be uh, rewarded properly and the profits arising from that utilization should be shared with them accordingly right next another important provision is capacity building and technology transfer so the convention supports the capacity building and technology transfer to enhance ability of countries to conserve and sustainably use biological diversity so basically the developed con, uh, develop, developing countries they do not have the capacity to utilize sustainably utilize the natural resources and biological resources so because of the lack of technology they tend to uh, overuse overuse 
or we can say inefficient use inefficient use of the genetic resources or biological resources whatever the resources so the uh, the provision one of the important provisions in this convention is the capacity of the developing countries have to be increased so that the resources are sustainably and efficiently utilized right right so next important convention is united nations convention on combating desertification so it is also uh, one of the outcomes of the rio summit or earth summit earth summit 1992 right it is a legally binding international treaty is established in uh, 1994 i mean the convention has opened for signature in 1992 so by 1994 sufficient number of countries have given their uh, assent uh, and ratified this convention so from 1994 it came into force so it addresses one of the most pressing environmental challenge of our time that is land degradation and land desertification right so this is one of the important threats along with the climate change and biodiversity uh, we are facing is land degradation and desertification so the convention uh, its major objective is to fight this aspect right so its objective is to fight uh, or combat desertification and mitigate the effects of drought so it also tries to mitigate the effects of drought through land management practices so there are several land management practices practices uh, you will uh, uh, come to know uh, about these practices when you uh, when we are studying the agricultural practice agriculture so through various uh, land management practices the convention tries to uh, <coughs> mitigate the impacts of land desertification and land degradation so it also it aims to promote economic and social development in affected areas enhance their resilience of ecosystem so enhance the resilience of ecosystems and communities and contribute to achievement of sustainable development goals right we have sustainable development goals uh, 16 sustainable development goals are there so the convention also tries to uh, fulfill the sustainable development goals right if you see the key provisions of this uh, convention sustainable land management so due to the unsustainable practices land management practices the land has been degrading so this convention has a provision for sustainable land management right <coughs> so to uh, what happens this is uh, these sustainable land management practices it prevents and reverses the land degradation restore degraded lands and improve the productivity and resilience of ecosystems so these are the goals of sustainable land management next one next one is integrated approach so the convention emphasizes an integrated approach to combat desertification involving participation of governments local communities and the civil society organization and even the private sector also so there uh, the, there are efforts from all the stakeholders so the convention tries to uh, achieve a coordination achieve a coordination in all these efforts so try to remember this word the private sector also the convention makes the private private sector also an important stakeholder in fighting the land degradation and desertification so in prelims there may be a question like this which are associated or the question may be like this which of the below are associated with uh, fighting land degradation land degradation or desertification according to the unf un ccd so options will be national governments local local people or local communities Uh, local communities and third one is civil society organizations and d private sector so options will be like only 1 2 only 1 2 3 only 2 3 4 
uh, fourth option will be like all the above so generally we tend to leave this private player we generally think that private private player has no role in uh, fighting or combating the land degradation and the desertification so there is a chance that you may get confused so try to remember these aspects these kinds of accept so in these uh, kinds of areas the examiner will try to confuse you so try to uh, be aware of this uh, about these types of these kinds of uh, tricky areas so <coughs> Uh, the private sector also plays an imp uh, it uh, it plays a critical role or it is an important stakeholder in fighting land degradation and desertification right next key provision is capacity building and knowledge sharing so the un ccd supports the capacity building efforts and facilitates the uh, exchange of knowledge technologies and the best practices among countries and the stakeholders to enhance their ability to combat desertification and manage land sustainably next one is monitoring report monitoring and uh, reporting so this organization also acts as a monitoring agency uh, sorry this convention provides mechanism for monitoring and reporting so that uh, we can evaluate and give uh, get feedback about how far we could achieve the targets or goals decided for fighting the uh, desertification and deg land degradation right so these are some of the important aspects about the uh, convention on uh, combating desertification right <coughs> next important uh, we can say measure about fighting climate change or for that matter Uh, to be specific the greenhouse gases ghgs or global warming global warming so this is one of the other important we can say measures or initiatives that is kyoto protocol right so it is the treaty it is a kyoto protocol is an international treaty it is adopted in 1997 it is an extension that uh, the protocol is an extension to unfccc right so it is an extension to united nations framework convention on climate change so it was negotiated in kyoto japan hence its name uh, <coughs> the kyoto protocol and it came into force from 2005 right so remember this uh, year also uh, it came into force in 2005 and when it was adopted it was adopted in 1997 right so objective objectives of this protocol are so its primary objective is to reduce global greenhouse gas emissions to mitigate climate change so this is the primary objective so it sets binding targets on developed countries so they basically this protocol divides countries all the countries into two two categories developed countries developed countries so these are called scheduled schedule one countries another uh, category is developing countries developing countries these are scheduled two countries right so countries have been divided into two categories developed countries and developing countries so this developed developed countries have binding obligations binding obligation right i mean they must achieve the targets uh, prescribed by the protocol similarly the developing countries so these have voluntary obligations i mean these con these countries also should work for mitigating the release of uh, gold uh, greenhouse gases but the targets are voluntarily so if they are capable uh, are willing to uh, reduce the greenhouse gases they can do so but it is compulsory for developed countries they must reduce the re uh, emission of greenhouse gases right so basically it's a, it sets binding targets for developed countries also known as uh, 
sorry the word is not schedule it is annex annexer one countries annexer one countries it is not the schedule one countries it is annexer one countries right so the protocol divides countries into two categories developed countries or developing uh, and developing countries they are also known as annexer one countries and annexer two countries so <coughs> uh the binding uh, the treaty sets binding uh, targets for developing countries also known uh, developed countries also known as annex 1 parties to reduce their emissions of six greenhouse gas uh, six greenhouse gases so to reduce the six greenhouse gases the protocol sets the target for developed countries those six gases are carbon dioxide methane nitrous oxide hydrofluorocarbons perfluoro uh, carbons and sulfur hexa fluoride so these are the major greenhouse gas uh, gases which are contributed to uh, contributing to global warming so there is there are targets on developed developed countries to reduce these six greenhouse gases if you see the key provisions in this uh, protocol so it established a system of emission reductions known as quantified emission limitation and reduction objectives for annexer parties so there is a emission reduction a system of emission reduction target is there that is uh, called as quantified emission limitation and a reduction objectives right similarly uh, the treaty also introduced flexible me mechanisms to help countries achieve their greenhouse gas uh, reduction targets so to achieve the greenhouse gas reduction targets the treaty has introduced flexible mechanisms such as uh, emissions trading clean development mechanism it is also known as cdm and joint implementation so try to remember these uh, three mechanisms also they can also be asked in the examination they are emission trading clean development mechanism and joint implementation right <coughs> right another important uh, we can say summit or conference of parties this is conference of parties summit paris agreement paris agreement right so paris agreement is an international treaty adapted adapted in 2015 so this paris summit held in uh, was held in 2015 december 2015 under unf ccc so just before we have seen that so ever since the unfccc has been formulated or agreed upon it became the source for further measures uh, in combating the climate change so in that effort the paris agreement has been held in uh, paris in 2000 uh, 2015 so it is important because uh, the uh, the objective of this summit is to i mean it has been agreed that the global response <coughs> to climate change so it should, it has been strengthened the global response to uh, fight uh, climate change or global warming has strengthened so there is a particular agreement in this summit that so limiting the global warming to well below 2 degree celsius so there has been an agreement through in this summit that the increase of global temperatures shall be limited to below 2 degree celsius and further the uh, treaty also says that with efforts efforts shall be there to limit this temperature increase to only 1.5 degree celsius from the pre industrial revolution level pre industrial pre industrial levels or pre industrial level pre industrial revolution levels so the conclusion here is so an agreement has been reached by all the global countries that the temperature rise due to global war warming shall not be increased to 2 degree celsius more than that the level of pre industrial pre industrial revolution further it says that effort should be made that the increase in temperature uh, temperature should be Uh, uh i mean confined to only 1.5 degree celsius uh, above the pre industrial levels so this is the important to take away 
from this paris agreement so because of this uh, binding agreement this uh, paris summit has become most popular right next one is montreal protocol so this is also very very important agreement so basically it came into or it uh, came into it established in 1987 right so to address the depletion of earth's ozone layer right as, as you all know there is an ozone layer protecting earth so ozone layer is there in stratosphere so it prevents the uv light ultra ultraviolet light especially uvb so it is harmful to human beings so ozone layer prevents this ultraviolet b radiation uh, from entering the earth's atmosphere so due to release of ozone depleting substances ozone depleting substances this uh, i mean the thickness of the layer has been declining so especially at the poles so at the uh, on the poles the thickness of the ozone layer was depleted depleting due to release of ozone depleting substances such as the main uh, culprit here is uh, chlorofluorocarbons so these play these have played a, uh, we can say major role in depletion of the ozone layer so to combat the depletion of ozone layer and phase out these chlorofluorocarbons and other ozone depleting substances an agreement has been reached uh, in the city of montreal canada hence its name came montreal protocol so in this uh, the objective of this protocol is to phase out the production and use of substances that deplete the ozone layer such as chlorofluorocarbons and uh, halons also and other ozone depleting substances so we can say uh, this particular uh, montreal protocol has been successful to a larger extent and we could phase out the chloro uh, chloro uh, chlorofluorocarbons and other uh, ozone depleting substances so because of the efforts and initiatives the we can i mean in the recent years we can see the uh, recovery of this recovery of ozone layer so uh, through the satellite images it has been find out that so after the phasing out of this uh, chlorofluorocarbons uh, and ozone depleting substances the thickness of the ozone layer has uh, later improved and uh, we are out of threat for the time being so this is all about the montreal montreal protocol all right next one is stockholm convention so uh, the uh, when it comes to per persistent organic chemicals and uh, pesticides and uh, other uh, hazardous chemicals there are three series of conventions so try to remember these conventions so first in that uh, sequence is stockholm convention on persistent organic pollutants so try to remember this word this is very very important uh, when it comes when we were uh, when uh, when we are studying the ecosystems and environment right so the stockholm convention on persistent organic pollutions is a global treaty adopted in 2001 to address the adverse effects of certain hazardous chemicals on human health and environment especially the persistent organic uh, pollutants so what are these persistent organic pollution pollutants these are highly toxic chemicals that persist in the environment first it persist means they do not degrade so they do not degrade and further they keep on accumulating they keep on accumulating in the environment and later they start showing their adverse impacts adverse impact both on the environment and also on the especially on the wildlife and especially on the human beings human beings so most of this per persistent organic uh, pollutants are they are carcinogenic in nature carcinogenic in nature and also they leads to other multiple other problems like lung uh, lung problems liver failure and uh, genetic uh, many genetic disorders uh, disorder disorders etc so uh, in that way they are problematic so basically they bio accumulate 
and uh, they transform they transform from one living organism to another living organism and uh, so basically they bio accumulate and they also bio magnify bio magnification is also there bio magnification so through this process bio accumulation and bio magnification uh, they uh, keep accumulating in the living organisms and they tra- can travel uh, long distances through air and water leading to wide spread uh, wide spread contamination and adverse impacts on ecosystems and human beings right so some of the key aspects key provisions in this convention are list of pops so there will be a list of pops including pesticides industrial chemicals and uh, unilateral uh, unintentional by products of in, the, in industrial processes so these uh, i mean there will be a list of this persistent organic pollutions control measures so the convention establishes obligation for parties to take measures to eliminate or reduce the pollution sorry the production of these pops and release there is a control also on pvo release of pvo pvops into environment right so alternatives and best practices so further the treaty also mentions the alternatives for pops especially so majority of the pops can be found in pesticides pesticides so in developing and poorer countries like india farmers are very much we can say illiterate so farmers are illiterate so they blindly use whatever that has been given uh, by the we can say the shops so they will bring it and they spray uh, those pesticides on the crops so because of uh, because of uh, because uh, i mean because of this the persistent organic pollution pollutants that are there in those pesticides though they enter the uh, fruits and vegetables of the crops and uh, when we consume when the people consume the fruits and vegetables so those uh, persistent pops enter into human body and they accumulate in the human human body uh, because they are not digestive and uh, they do not disintegrate and they start uh, showing their adverse impact so uh, as we have discussed they are carcinogenic agents so they may cancer and they may also cause the failure of multiple organism organs and also they may impact the Uh, they may show their impacts at the gene level also so the genetic disorders might also occur right these are the some of the aspects about the stockholm convention next one is uh, second uh, in this series is basel convention so it basel convention on the control of transboundary movement of transboundary movement of hazardous waste and their disposal right so it is an international treaty established in 1989 to address the growing problem of hazardous waste management and its transboundary uh, movement so it is uh, city is named uh, city uh, the treaty is nego- negotiated in basel uh, the city in switzerland so hence the name came so basically we have understood that there is a problem with the hazardous chemicals hazardous chemicals and also uh, we can say some uh, hazardous chemicals and biomedical waste is also there biomedical waste biomedical waste is also there so the developed can uh, developed countries have realized that so these wastes have uh, hazardous impacts on the environment and also on the human beings so they have started exporting this waste they have started exporting this waste to poor and developing countries so uh, for example countries like india and most of the african countries so the developed countries have started exporting this waste hazardous chemicals and uh, biomedical waste to india and other african countries so these poorer countries they have started feeling the heat of this waste so to prevent this kind of uh, transboundary transboundary movement of hazardous waste and uh, chemicals uh, this uh, basel convention has been adopted 
right so some of the important provisions of this uh, in the summit are uh, this uh, convention are definition of hazardous waste so this summit tries to define what is what constitutes the hazardous waste so convention defines the hazardous waste and establishes criteria for their classification including their characteristics and sources similarly uh, the prior informed consent procedure has been established so uh, as these waste hazardous chemicals and uh, biomedical waste are hazardous the whatever the countries that are importing this waste so the exporting countries they have to adopt a prior informed consent from the importing countries so that they are not at the descent uh, not at the disadvantage so this important provision is also there in this convention prior informed consent right so environmentally sound management the treaty the convention also bats for sound uh, environmentally sound management of this uh, hazardous waste uh, including their minimization recycling treatment and disposal in an environmentally environmentally sound manner right liability and enforcement the convention includes provisions on liability for damage caused by hazardous waste and mechanisms for enforcing its provisions including cooperation among parties so uh, the i mean the convention also prescribes the liability uh, if a damage is occurring due to the transboundary movement of hazardous chemicals right so if you see the movie singam 2 i guess so this movie is uh, so major the major uh, plot in this movie is see fighting the illegal transboundary movement of transboundary movement of this hazardous chemicals hazardous chemicals especially the biomedical waste right right this is uh, some of the important uh, information about the basel convention next one is rotterdam convention uh, on trade of hazardous chemicals and pesticides so it is also one of the uh, important convention in series of conventions that is to fight the pops persistent organic pollutants pollutants and hazardous chemicals so it is an environmental treaty established in 1998 under united nations environment uh, program so the uh, the convention aims to promote shared responsibility and cooperative efforts among participating countries in international trade of certain hazardous chemicals hazardous chemicals and pesticides so the primary objective is uh, objective of this convention is to ensure that countries are informed about the potential risks associated with specific hazardous chemicals and pesticides before they are important so just now i have uh, taken an example the best example is pesticides right pesticides so basically they are very harmful to the uh, human beings and also to the uh, environment because lot of chemicals are there in this paste pesticides so because the indian farmers are not that aware and basically most of the farmers are illiterate all right so they they buy these pesticides and they spray uh, these pesticides on the crops so because they because uh, the uh, they even uh, they do not know the hazardous effects of this um, pesticides they do not even wear the uh, minimum protective equipment to uh, overcome the hazards of these pesticides similarly Uh, because of this hazardous pesticides the ecosystem is damaged whatever the micro organisms are there in the soil they are, they are also uh, getting died and also it uh, the pesticides are very much dangerous for the uh, health of the humans health of the humans so most of the pesticides are carcinogenic and they have adverse impacts at the gene level also so they may cause genetic problems also so because uh, because of these these kinds of issues it has been established uh, it has been 
ensure that so before in, uh, importing these kinds of pesticides and hazardous chemicals the importing countries must be informed properly about the adverse impacts so best example we can take is uh, the uh, the one pesticide is there uh, right there are pesticides like indosulfan so these kind of uh, pesticides are there many other pesticides are there so they have been banned also uh, they have been banned also and they are presently uh, banned from uh, importing uh, into india right so these kinds of conventions will help in banning those kinds of uh, harmful pesticides right so if we see the key provisions of this convention right list of hazardous chemicals so the convention establishes a list of chemicals subjected to pic procedure known as uh, prior informed consent procedure list so this list includes pesticides and industrial chemicals that have been banned or severely restricted due to their hazardous properties right information exchange the convention facilitates the exchange of information among participating countries uh on the hazardous and the safe handling hazards and the safe handling of listed chemicals so exporting countries are required to pro provide informing uh, in uh, importing countries relevant information including labeling requirements and safety data sheets so in this way there are pro uh, protection mechanisms have been created through this convention right right another uh, important convention so uh, today it is the last convention for our discussion that is the bonn convention on migratory species so bonn convention on migratory species so it is officially known as the convention on uh, convention on the conservation of migratory species of wild animals Uh, simply known as CMS it is an international treaty established in 1979 under the united nations environment uh, uh, program so the primary objectives of uh, objective of this convention is to ensure the conservation and sustainable use of migratory species and their habitats so it seeks to address the threats faced by migratory animals such as habitat loss climate change pollution and as unsustainable hunting and fishing practices so as we all know there are many migratory species especially uh, the birds so uh, <coughs> uh, when we were studying the critical uh, endangered animals or vulnerable uh, species we have studied that some of the uh, migrating birds also they are critically endangered or endangered because of unsustainable uh, uh, we can say uh, hunting and uh, due to loss of their habitat because of climate change and etc so so the migratory birds are uh, facing lot of threats and their habitat is being threatened so because they are uh, because of these reasons their numbers are declining so to protect those birds migratory birds especially and all other species this convention has been brought in so the key provisions of this convention are species listings so this uh, facilitates the convention facilitates the listing of migratory migratory species in appendices 1 and 2 based on conservation status so con conservation status means whether they are critically endangered endangered or uh, etc categories are there that is known as uh, conservation status so based on their conservation status they are listed in appendices 1 and 2 so appendix 1 includes species that are threatened with extinction and uh, prohibits their taking <coughs> so in appendix 1 the critically endangered species and the species which are uh, facing the threat of extinction those are um, those are placed and in appendix 2 uh, it includes the species that would significantly benefit from international cooperation for their conservation similarly if there is a provision for conservation measures the parties to the convention are required to implement conservation measures to protect migratory species and their habitats 
right action plans the convention also encourages development of development and implementation of action plans for conservation of listed species similarly it also uh, mentions the provision of collaborative initiated by all the parties that have been uh, signed the convention right so these are the some of the important aspects about the bowen convention so try to remember this main point bowen convention is about protecting the migratory species which are predominantly migrate right so these are some of the uh, some of the conventions and uh, we can say conventions protocols and the summits which i thought are important from the point of view of examination so there are further some more conventions uh, and the summits you from your side try to find out uh, some information about those conventions also right now we will see some of the questions that are being asked from this topic right uh, first question is it is asked in 2016 uh, the question is what are the importance uh, what are the importances of united nations convention to combat desertification so this is uh, the question is directly about the uh, uncc the united nations convention on combating desertification first statement is it aims to promote effective action through innovative national programs and a supportive international partnership so this statement is correct uh, it aims to promote effective action through innovative national programs and uh, supportive international pra- partnerships second uh, statement it has special um, special or particular focus on south asia and north african regions and it uh, its secretariat facilitates the allocation of major portion of financial resources to those regions right it is com- uh, so this statement is incorrect second statement is in- incorrect so if you see uh, if you see generally the statement may look correct because the problem of land degradation and desertification it is more predominant in south asia and north african regions but there is no particular provision uh, within the convention saying that these areas should be focused more and more financial resources have to be targeted there so try to i mean be careful in these uh, kinds of situations because these are tricky areas and the examiner may uh, is definitely trying to confuse you with some uh, generic statements that may look as correct right third statement it is committed to bottom up approach encouraging the participation of local people and uh, in combating desertification so right this statement is correct it follows the bottom up approach and uh, includes and uh, i encourages the people community level people to actively participate in the uh, in fighting the desert desertification so the correct option is option c statements 1 and 3 are correct right next question it is asked in 2015 question is which of the following is associated with the issue of control and phasing of uh, out of the use of ozone depleting substances so just now we have studied uh, the montreal protocol it has been adapted to fight the uh, to control and phase out the uh, use of ozone depleting substances especially chlorofluorocarbon so correct option is option b montreal protocol right so this is all for today thank you thank you for joining the lecture uh, see you next time until then have a good day bye Thank you.